morning to all. Um, my name is Johan uh, and my wife Leah. Uh, well, so for some of you, I could uh, identify myself in one of the highlights of my life and even Leah's was in high school. And I can see a lot of kids or teens here. And high school has been a, a significant phase in our life. Um, and according to one Filipino song that some of your parents would know is that high school is truly fun or in Tagalog ang saya or it's uh, those are the glory days of your high school. For me, when I was young, uh, I was quite arrogant and I had this mindset that I would become very successful and, and rich uh, after I graduated or when I was young and graduated top of the class in my uh, in the city that I was in, in the Philippines, uh, when I was in elementary. My parents uh, were very proud of me, uh, including my aunts and uncles often tell that I'll go places, uh, like, like here, LA. Uh, <laughs> it was also during this time that my friends and I, after graduating uh, elementary, wanted to continue to enjoy uh, the barcada or the groupies. So we were invited to a vacation Bible school uh, in our place in, in, in Cavite. So we had a exposure just to meet friends, meet girls during that time, uh, but attended a vacation Bible school. And there was a, a time there, April 16, that we had an encounter with a specific uh, friend of ours, a bigger brother, who asked us a question that I wasn't able to answer. At my young age, I thought I could answer all things because I thought of myself as being good. But the question is, if I were to die that evening, where will I go? So that question was quite simple for me to answer. So I said, I'll go to heaven. But the second question is, what will be your re uh, response if God asks you, why would I allow you to enter heaven? So that was a simple question that I, I had answers, but at that time, those answers weren't enough or correct. So it has, uh, taken me aback that I can't answer correctly that simple question. And that gave, that started my journey in knowing and learning about God's gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross and his resurrection. And at that time, uh, I accepted him as my savior. Uh, take note, I accepted him as my savior. I learned more about Christ as my savior over the years, but I didn't really make him the Lord of my life. But because of his great love for me, he taught me some hard lessons through failures, disappointments, and failed relationships. And this brought me uh, literally to my knees. And still now in learning and appreciating that he uh, is continuing to become the Lord of my life. And at that time, started the journey about uh, my Lord and my Savior Christ. Like Johan, I heard the gospel when I was very young. I was in first year high school when somebody shared to me and my classmates about Jesus and his gift of salvation. Our Bible teacher would come to our school regularly and we would attend her Bible study once a week. For two years, I would go to her class and I grew in my faith. But after two years, she was not anymore allowed to come to our school and I didn't anymore see her. Since I was not connected to any church and being the only Christian in our family, I slowly lost touch with God until he became completely out of the picture. Several years later, I found myself longing for God again, and I started visiting the chapel in our cam campus to pray. I would go there by myself almost every day, every afternoon to talk to God. I found solace whenever I would sit there quietly and talk to him. It was also during this time that my sister invited me to a Bible study at AIM conducted by CCF, and I accepted her invitation. I heard the gospel of salvation again, and I prayed to accept Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Even if I was studying in UPLB, I did not mind the commute from Las Banas to Makati every Wednesday afternoon just to attend Bible study because I was hungry for the word. I started to grow in my relationship with Jesus, and I would invite my friends to come with me to the Bible study. I became involved in a small group in CCF later and on where I can be discipled. As I grew in my faith, I started serving the Lord and become, became a disciple as well, 
for youth and then later on for single ladies. I had my share of spiritual highs and lows in my journey with God, but I will not anymore elaborate them here. But one thing I would, that I would like to acknowledge in your presence is God's blessing of a lifetime partner who I met in CCF when I was serving the Lord. I was single for the longest time and did not imagine that I would finally find a lifetime partner at such a late stage of my life. Johan and I met at the Thanksgiving dinner for volunteers of Franklin Graham Crusade. Since then, we started going out or he would visit me at home. We would attend prayer nights and Bible study together. And as we got to know each other better, I discovered that he met my list of not my very short list of non-negotiables. We got married less than a year later, and the rest, as they say, is history. A long single life. So the list was here, but when I met Leah, it became a, a shorter <laughs> list, okay? Uh, God's timing. Uh, almost four years ago, uh, in our last trip to the US, uh, I was literally telling myself and Leah that I do not want to go back to Sydney at that point. Some of you might be saying that the same, don't want to go back to the Philippines or to some of your places, but, but that was not because of the fun that we had in the US, nor the living or the difficult work living setup that we have in Australia, but it's because of our local church in Sydney. We were coming back to Sydney, that was in 2011. We were coming back to Sydney with our role of continuing to lead a small group of, Christian, of a Christian congregation we're in in the last two years, uh, our senior pastors have left Australia one, um, uh, one by one. Uh, but also I was returning to Sydney at that time knowing that the only church leader that I was working with um, has decided to move to another church once I come back uh, to Sydney. I was in a position of not knowing how to support the flock of believers, literally were a sheep without a shepherd. Uh, we were all perplexed in a figurative way, bruised and disheartened, and it was during these dark valleys in our life did we see and experience our true savior, uh, which is our true shepherd. This is a, a interesting book that was shared to me when I was in Sydney, How to Close Your Church Without Even Trying, and I was in that position at that point. <laughs> Basically, we, he used uh, the Lord used the, the small group of people, a handful, to encourage us to press on and to persevere to meet as two small groups of men and women and to have a very simple church worship service. After a year and a half of this journey, the newly formed International Ministry of CCF Philippines connected with us and encouraged me to take part in a leadership retreat in 2013 of January. Uh, that was the time I met some of the leaders here. And then on March 16, 2013, our small independent Christian church in Sydney decided to become a, a full-pledged CCF international satellite. This is our photo when we were uh, in the early 2011, a handful. That was in January. Then in July 2011, we were celebrating some Christmas in July events. And then this was a uh, one of the end time, uh, not really the end time, <laughs> but uh, the end of the year celebration in 2011, 2012. It felt like the end time. <laughs> then in 2013, we became a full-pledged uh, satellite of CCF. Indeed, the Lord will supply. <laughs> Indeed, the Lord will supply all our needs according to His riches and glory. The Lord has orchestrated and caused growth in his church, his ministry in Sydney through CCF. Uh, up to this point, we are all growing in faith, in vision, and in the transforming knowledge of the person and plans of our Lord Jesus Christ. Two and a half years ago, I was the only one handling Sunday school ministry. Although the ministry was still very small, about five to seven children at that time, when Nathan and Dee came to Sydney, they saw that this was not good for me because I was not able to listen to the Sunday messages and will get burned out eventually. So they suggested that we announce the need for volunteers and pass around the paper so those who would like to volunteer can sign up. 
praise God that so many people volunteered and we now have at least 15 volunteers who take turns every eight weeks. As CCF is growing, the number of kids are also growing and starting in December this year, we will have two separate rooms for Sunday school, one for toddlers and their moms and another one for older kids. Just to give you a, a bit of picture of what's been happening in Sydney right now since we became a satellite, we were able to, by God's grace, organize some bridging events. Uh, this was a year ago. Uh, we had a, a family life event. Uh, is Pastor Nate there? Let me find Pastor Nate. And then we are also privileged to celebrate uh, our anniversary, our second year anniversary, uh, two months ago with Pastor Peter. And this has never, this is a rarity for us in the church to have this uh, ballroom full. And it is our desire that we could expand and grow uh, in the different cities of Australia. We are indeed privileged to be standing before you to testify on God's gracious uh, goodness and faithfulness and express in a very appropriate time our thanksgiving to our great Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Indeed, uh, as one famous song in the 80s was, is, uh, is, uh, and the lyrics would say, our Redeemer is truly indeed faithful and true. So to God be all the glory. Thank you. 